Right, we are all set up for our little encounter. Uh, we're not going to be doing the full battle phase for this. Uh, since this is actually part of the management phase, we're going to be avoiding things like the battle events and stuff like that. So it's going to be a sort of simplified battle. The full battle for campaign turn one is going to follow this. <laughs> but yeah, I've got everything set up. I have... My veteran here, which has stumbled into the wrong bit of farmland. We've got the drake, who's going to convince him of his, um, well, being lost in the wrong place and tasting nice. But that's a dragon. Um, this is a 12 by 12 dungeon tile from the Myth board game. Uh, we're supposed to be doing on a 10 by 10 but it's okay. I'll just deploy one square in for, me, for both my veteran and also for the drake. I've got some dice, I've also got some d10s here which I'll use to signify initiative. Um, yeah, one thing is that the drake is going to have three activations. It's got multiple activations and it's going to activate three different times in its turn. Now, I'm thinking that that's quite overpowered, so what I'll be doing is something a little bit different. It's going to activate three times, but what I'm going to do is roll separate initiative for each of its activations. That way, I might stand a chance. Because <laughs> if this thing wins the initiative, comes charging in with three activations, I'm toast. Yeah, my, my guy's toast. So, what I'm going to do to give my veteran a little bit of, of, of hope, <laughs> I'm going to be rolling for each of his activations as a separate initiative. We've got a couple of D20s here to signify life. The Drake is starting with 15 Vigor. My Veteran is starting with 9. Now, we are using, like I say, a board from the Myth board game. It does have terrain and scatter cover actually on the board itself, so I won't be using any 3D terrain or any separate tokens or sort of um, objects which you can do, and in this game you can use figures if you want to, but you can also use um, tokens or standees. This game has been designed with role players in mind as like a gateway into the skirmish miniatures side of things, but like I say, I'm pretty sure that a lot of role players, whether they have the VTT or whether they have like physical tokens or things to... To show different kinds of terrain, you can use, like I say, tokens to show different pieces of terrain. But also, you can put you can put all the creatures and your player characters. Yeah, you can yeah, you can use tokens. It's also, I mean, I've got to be honest, the tokens work really, really well. But I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for figures. Now you can also use standees. Again, I know that there are role players that use standees for their games. They're easy to do. Download, cut, and these are like uh, like tokens, but <laughs> vertical tokens, so they have a bit of height to them. But yeah, you can use those, or like I say, you can use the miniatures. It's perfect, yeah, perfectly fine. It's up to you. So we are set up. I have a bunch of quick reference sheets here. Um, I've basically printed out the page for the Drake. I've created my own quick reference sheets. I've also printed out the one that has the um, AI. It's, it's not going to actually be used in this, in this uh, encounter because the Drake is both aggressive and bestial. So it's basically just going to charge me and that's it. But I have that there for future games and for the upcoming battle phase. Over the other side, we've got another quick reference sheet. I've got here the combat maneuvers. Um, the use of combat maneuvers was confirmed in the last video. Um, Alex did make a comment regarding the use of combat maneuvers, which I read completely wrong. Uh, I mean, going back to the book, I can see how it's supposed to be read, but I can also understand why I read it wrong in the first place. Uh, and then under there... That little bit there is actually part of the warband sheet and highlighting the guy who's in a little bit of trouble. 
Uh, over here we've got our hex map. Over here we've got the rule book. Pencil, eraser, dice. And we're ready to go. So, let me set everything up and we will start the encounter. Veteran versus Drake. Right, I've got my dice ready. We are going to start. However, we're not, like I mentioned earlier, we're not going to be doing the complete battle phase. We're only going to be doing parts of it that are relevant to a small encounter like this. So things like the uh, battle trigger won't occur. Things like the battle events won't occur. Um, the strategic location that can give uh, an extra order, again, that's not going to play a part in this because we've only got 1v1. But we are going to have to do surprise and placement because that can still happen. Right, uh, surprise, we're rolling a d6. And we are trying to get, hang on, it looks a bit, hang on, looks a little bit bright. Let me turn down, there we go. Right, um, so on a d6, one to two, no surprise. Three to four, the warband is surprised, or my guy is surprised. And on a five to six, the opponents are surprised. So we roll and we get a two, so there is no surprise. So nobody gets the bonus plus two to the first initiative. Fine. Placement. Deployment. Where is my guy going to arrive on this battle board? Now, this board is 12 by 12. We're supposed to be on a 10 by 10. So I'll just be deploying one square in. So my guy is deploying to east. So he's going to be deploying this. I'm putting him center for the time being. Should he burn? The thing is, with, with the Drake, he's got wings, he can fly. There are no rules in the game yet for flying or for large creatures, like with large bases and how they're supposed to move. There's no rules for flying or large basing bases just yet, but I have asked Alex to kind of look into it because I think for things like dragons and harpies, flying is definitely something which is intrinsic to those creatures and we need to represent that. And having large bases like dragons or etins, you know, it's, it is going to be a factor. So, um, all right, so he's going to be on the east side, on the east end. And the dragon is one, the north. Uh-oh. So, we've got to put them as far, is it as far away as possible? Only if, on the, only if they're on the same side. Right, well, I'm going to put the dragon as far away as I can because I can, it's a solo game I'm going to put him as far away as I can but he's on coming in from the north and I'm coming in from the east yeah <laughs> I've got to give myself a chance, come on <laughs> this thing's going to be getting three activations now what I'm planning to do is it says uh, a drake will activate three different times in its turn which you know, as it's written means when it is activated, it takes three activations then. But I think that's kind of overkill. So what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to be rolling initiative for each of its activations. And then we'll see the sequence. I may be able to get an attack in before his last one, maybe. <laughs> but we'll have to see. Right. So the dragon starts with constitution times three. It has a constitution of five. So it starts off with 15 vigor or 15 life. My guy has starting vigor of nine. Yeah. Okay, another thing is armor. Uh, my guy has a defense level of 13. He's got padded leather and a helm. Uh, the dragon has hide, which counts as heavy armor. 12, excuse me, 12 plus dex. And he has a dex of four. So he's got an essential DL of... 16! Uh-oh, that's not good either. Right, the dragon also has claws and bite. Uh, claws I'm taking as slash, bite I'm taking as piercing. Um, and I'm going to be rolling randomly to see which one they attack with. Uh, because the different types of damage does have special rules. Uh, let me just give you some quick examples of the weapons that you know, warbands can use. Bludgeoning. Uh, ignores one DL. So defense level counts as one less against bludgeoning weapons. Piercing. Uh, attacks deal plus two damage when the character attacks before their target in the same round. 
And then slashing causes plus one damage against light armor, plus two damage against no armor. My guy has light armor. So he's gonna, the dragon's going to be getting a plus one with his claws and a plus two with his bite if the bite goes before my activation. So you've got to keep these things in mind. There are different damage types and there are different effects. So let's roll for the initiative. Right, nobody got surprised, so nobody gets that plus two bonus. So we just add their SPI values, their spirit values. The Drake has two. My guy has... We well, would have two, but he's wearing a helm. So it's down to one. So the Drake gets plus two, I get plus one. Okay, let's see if I get a chance to do something before he does. <laughs> and the answer is possibly. All right, now that was a zero. So he's gonna go first. Now these get plus two, so these both become fives. I get a plus one. So mine is also a five. Now, um, normally the rules say when you have like a tie, it's the one with the highest stat or value that goes first. So he has a higher SPI than me, but to give my guy a chance, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat <laughs> and say that I go before his other two attacks. Yeah, I'm bending the rules a little bit. I've got to give my guy a little bit of a chance, but yeah, I think... When you roll like opposed, like for things like initiative, if it's a tie, the person with the highest stat wins. In this case, the Drake does have a higher spirit than my guy. But like I say, just to give my my, my model a fighting chance, I'm going to let him go second, followed by the Drake's other two attacks. This is going to hurt. Uh, my, my figure is using the feint. Combat Maneuver, that's the one from the war, war Bands collection that he's going to be using for this game. And Alex confirmed uh, in a comment on the last video that um, the War Band has this set of Combat Maneuvers. Every time you get a new member, they bring a new Combat Maneuver. And then for each battle, each of your War Band members can select one of the Maneuvers to bring or to use during the game. But it's only one time. Only one time. So, yeah, so this is the sequence. The Drake's going to go first, then me, and then he's going to go two more times. This is not good. Right. Um, now, the dragon's going to get first activation. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, he can reach me. So he can move and then do... Okay, so a dash, you forfeit that action to move again. But charge means you move a number of squares equal to the speed. If they end their movement adjacent, they can attack at plus one. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to charge. So one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three. Yeah. So he charges in. I've got to try and make sure you can still see the figures. <laughs> Took me ages to paint this figure. He's going to die. <laughs> Right, he charges in with his first activation. So let's get rid of that. That's been used. So he's going to charge in. He's going to attack with a plus one. Uh oh. Right, uh, what's he going to use? Claws or bite? One to three, claws, four to six. Bite. We've got a two. He's going to be using his claws, which are going to be doing plus one damage. Slashing. Right, uh, he is going to roll. Doesn't get an advantage. He's getting a plus four. And my DL is 13. So he's going to get... He's got to get a 9 or higher. Uh-oh. And he's getting a plus 1. So he needs an 8 or higher. He gets a 10. He hits. And he's doing plus 1 damage. So D4 plus 1. He rolls a 1. Plus 1 is 2. So I take 2 damage. I'm down to 7. Right, that was the first activation. That was his charge attack. Ouch. I am now going to activate and hit back. Now, I have Feint, which I can use once per battle or once per game, uh, which allows me to roll with an advantage. I'm rolling two dice. I have a strength of two, so I'm getting a plus two. And I do crits on a 19 or 20. Right. 
the DL defense level of the dragon is 12 plus dex, dex of 4, so DL is 16. So I need to roll a 14 or higher on one of these dice, but I really want a 19 or 20 because I need the crits. Right, let us attack. <gasps> look, 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 look. I've got a 20. We get a critical. Yes, yes, yes. Whew. Okay, so we get a critical. Now, for criticals, there are tables. And you've got to roll high. So each type of weapon has its own table. Again, it's probably out of focus because I've focused on the board. Um, but yeah, you roll a d10 on this table. I'll put, I'll put, uh, I'll, maybe up here I'll put the table. So we've got to roll a d10. And we've got to see, oh God, what happens. Now, there are a bunch of things that could work here in my benefit. I mean, if I get a 10, if I roll a 10, he's dead. A 9, disembowel, he takes double damage. Meh. Brutal Cleave, number six, the target's weapon is, da is destroyed. Oh, that could be good. I could destroy his claws or his bite, so he'd only have one form of attack. But I really want a 10. I really want to kill the guy. Now, I'm not going to be rolling two dice. I'm only rolling one. There's no modifiers. It's just a straightforward D10. Let us see what happens to the dragon. We get a five. Mm. Dented Armor. The target's DL is reduced by D4 for the rest of the battle. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So his DL is reduced by... Ooh, 4. So his DL is now 12. That's good. And we do D4 standard damage. We don't do anything else. The um, hand axe does have the defensive trait, which means if it's used with a shield, I get a plus one defense level. However, even though the miniature has a shield, this model doesn't actually, my, my uh, veteran doesn't actually have a shield, so he doesn't get the defensive. But D4 damage to the dragon, we get oh, only one damage. All right, he's down to 14. <laughs> well, I mean, I've, I've, I've let him know that I'm here. <laughs> I've done a little bit of damage. I've damaged his scales and his hide, so he's only at DL12 now. But will I survive long enough to attack again? Because the dragon now has two more activations. Right. Uh, Drake's second activation. Uh, <laughs> he's going to attack. Um, so he gets a plus four. I have a DL of 13, so he needs... He's not charging anymore, so he doesn't get the plus one. So he's getting a plus four. He needs a nine plus to hit. He gets a 13. He does hit. Oh, I forgot to see which, which weapon he's using. Uh, one to three claws. Yeah, claws. So he's doing a plus one. So he does... Oops. Uh, two plus one is three damage. I'm down to four. Can I survive? <laughs> We've got one more activation left. Can I survive one more activation and then hope I win the initiative next turn? Because the initiative is rolled every round, every turn. So, uh, last activation. Ooh. So he's got a strength of four. What's he using? Claws or bite? He is using a bite this time. Now, the bite isn't going to do anything because the bite counts as piercing and piercing only gives a bonus when it when it's before the opponent. So, because it's after me, this bite is not going to have any bonus damage, that bonus two. So, uh, he's trying to bite me, plus four, so he needs to get a nine plus. And he gets a 16, of course he does. <laughs> uh, so, no bonus of damage, he just does d4. I've got four life left. Oh, my word. Ooh. Actually, that's my dice, I'm not rolling that. This is the black dice. Right. Um, he rolls and he gets... Ooh, a three. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Okay, I'm down to one life. I need to do a crit and I need to kill. I've got no other choice. And I've got to win the initiative. <laughs> so I've got to win the initiative. I've got to do a crit and I've got to roll a zero for the crit. I can do that. <laughs> Not with my dice, everyone says. Not with my dice. Right, um, okay, so that is the end of the round. We've got to roll for initiative again. 
Nobody gets any bonuses, um, so it's just spirit. Dragon gets plus two, I get plus one. So, initiative is doomed. We are doomed. Okay. Plus two is nine. So, twelve, nine. And then I get an eight. And then they get a four. So, in terms of activation, dragon goes twice, then me, if I'm still alive. And then the dragon again. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Right. Um, so, yeah, the dragon's just going to attack again. So, his first attack, he is going to attack with claws, which means he'll get a plus one damage. If he hits, I'm dead. It doesn't really matter, does it? So, he's attacking with claws. He gets a plus four. He needs a nine plus. He gets a six. He gets a six. He misses. Can you see this okay on there? I don't know if the numbers are... Because it's quite a... Not, probably not the best dice set to use. You've got grey on black. But he rolled a six. He misses. Thank God for that. Second activation. Second attack. Now, you can normally move as well. But I don't think he's going to move. So he's just going to do a normal attack. So again, he needs a nine to hit. Come on, please. 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 He gets an eleven. I'm dead. <laughs> D4 damage. He gets a one. That's all he bloody needs, isn't it? Ah! So, my guy goes down. And dragons are deadly. A character taken out of action by a drake is instantly dead. So. <laughs> here be dragons. In this hex. Let's move. Oh, we, we knew this was going to happen. Yeah. We all knew this was going to happen. So, in this hex, I would think it was hex 32, wasn't it? Yeah. So, in hex 32, we are going to have a dragon or drake. So, I'm not going to want to go there again. <laughs> um, I've lost a veteran. I've lost padded armor, open helm, hand axe. I've lost all of that. So, my warband is really not in the best of condition for the first battle phase. I've gained, I gained a grunt, a recruit, through the, I think, wasn't it, um, I think one of the other encounters on the other hex, I found a wounded warrior, or a wounded person. So I actually have another grunt, but at the expense of a veteran. That's really not good. I'd rather have the veteran any day of the week. So I have my leader. One veteran and three grunts for the upcoming battle phase. Oh, I'm in trouble. Right. So, bye-bye, Vents. Maybe I'll find another veteran. Oh, I can use that figure again. <laughs> Figures came out quite nice. But uh, not much he's going to do against a, a dragon, especially with no experience. Right. So, what can we do now? We have a couple of options. Let me let me change the zoom thingy, me Bobby. No, I don't. So, we have far, there's two farmland here. This is where I found the wounded soldier, my new grunt. Change the brightness a little bit. All right. This is where we have a dragon. I'm going to draw a little dragon in there. But we do have 31 is a warehouse, which is currently occupied by a possessed warband. Or in 51, there is an engineering camp with trolls, which is down here. I'm tempted to go for the troll. The troll occupied engineering camp, because that gives quite a nice, uh, what are they called? Command actions. It gives access to another command action, which is quite nice. So I'm thinking I might go with with the re, with the remainder of my warband. I may go down south to this hex here and fight the trolls. Now, oops, sorry, I moved the camera. Right now, before we do the battle, we are going to have to actually roll a couple of things, but we'll do that. We'll do that at the start of the next video, before we do the battle. 
But we are going to have to do a couple of things. We are going to have to roll. Battle trigger event. We're going to have to roll. Bump. Uh, terrain. I'm probably just going to use the board again. So I'm probably not going to have any extra terrain. But we're going to have to roll for surprise. Strategic positions, placements and everything else. So in the next video we'll be seeing the battle phase in its entirety. Uh, in this in this part of this video, we just had the encounter which had some of the rules. <laughs> so, right, next video, battle phase. I think we're going to go and pay a visit to the trolls and try and get that engineering base or that engineering camp. Right, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you saw roughly how combat works in the game. Um, yeah, my, my guy didn't stand much of a chance. <laughs> But there you go. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell, add some comments as well. But I will see you in the battle. Take care. Stay safe. Cheers.